She found solace through cycling, a sport that would develop her into one of the finest women cyclists in the world. And she's from Burnaby. Her record speaks for itself. Silver medalist world championship, seven times Canadian national champion, U.S. pro tour champion, two-time Pan American championship medalist, two times Commonwealth Games participant, three-time Tour de Tour de Gaston champion, winner of the inaugural women's race at the Giro de Burnaby in the Burnaby Heights, just actually a block from where she lived at that time. And then her dream came true, representing Canada in track cycling at the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics. She is here this evening, and at some point will introduce another very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the world's great women cyclists, Gina Green. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the world's great women cyclists, Gina Green. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much for that. Um, excuse me while I go and press a button on that thing over there, the computer. <clears throat> Wanted to start off showing this picture. There we go. <laughs> 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 true and I commend everybody here in this room for setting yourself such an ambitious goal and I believe that uh, you will achieve this being the biggest and best BC Senior Games at the 25th anniversary. So I want to commend you all for setting such a big goal and I am very sure that all the determined people in here will, uh, will do their best to achieve that. <clears throat> So as this guy says, set your goals low and you won't be disappointed, but uh, I do, uh, do uh, think that we're going to be doing something different here today. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the uh, microphone here. I ended up fighting a little bit of a virus last, <clears throat> last week, so if I start to sound squeaky, that might be the, the reason. <coughs> my water here. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at uh, uh, <clears throat> my first alumni uh, dinner, which was new to me because I would usually be going to athlete dinners, but at this alumni di dinner, we were given this this this, this book, and it's it's um it's a it's a book about excellence, and in this book are stories of of Olympians, other Olympians, and uh, and the things that they had to go through to achieve excellence. One of my favorite stories in there was a story by Heather Moisey. She was a bobsled uh, competitor. <clears throat> She ended up uh, winning the 2010 gold medal here in, uh, in, in Whistler. Her story in, 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 shorts, in short is, uh, is, is, is one of her quotes, is living with no regrets. And in her story, she goes in to talk about opportunities. And opportunities are out there for everybody. But, she says, so are excuses. Excuses are everybody, everywhere for everybody, and so are opportunities. And her story, she, she's, she's, she's from out from a PEI, and she was a bobsledder. Now all, all bobsledders go to Calgary to train, because that's the, the best training facility in Canada, and actually number, more, more number one in the world. But she was from PEI, and, and her situation was that, that she couldn't afford to be out in Calgary. Calgary. She couldn't afford all the top-notch training that all the rest of the Canadian athletes were receiving. And so she had to make some sacrifices and some <clears throat> Some different, some different ways of training. And she thought to herself, well, she could make the excuse that she didn't have the facilities that the rest of the Canadian athletes had, or she can find opportunities within her own city to help her achieve the best that she could be. So what she ended up doing, <clears throat> instead of being at this world-class facility, was she started, <laughs> for her power training, she started pushing cars. <laughs> she started pushing cars, not only in the summer, but also in the winter, oh. when it was snowy and cold 
and sleeting and hailing. And it got so bad that one day she thought to herself, I can't, I can't train in this. And she started walking home and she realized to herself, you know what, I can make these excuses or I can find myself an opportunity. So she went to the mayor of the city and she said, she, she said, Mayor, what can you do to help me out with this? Sorry, I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> Anyways, the mayor opened up an empty warehouse that was just down the street. And he opened that warehouse for her to go and push her cars in the warehouse. <laughs> she went from pushing cars to winning a gold medal at the Whistler, Bay, uh, Whistler, Whistler Olympics. So I, I, I really like that story. I actually didn't start my career in, in cycling. I, I was a soccer player, and uh, unfortunately, I damaged my knees. Uh, bad enough, enough that I couldn't uh, do my sport anymore. So I thought, same sort of thing. I, th I thought, you know, I could make excuses about not being able to do the thing that I really love to do. And I found the opportunities. And those opportunities came at really strange times. The first thing that got me into cycling was a friend uh, out in West Bank, uh, BC. She, uh, she, said to, uh, she said to me, she goes, hey, Gina, you know, why don't you try my mountain bike? And I had no idea what a mountain bike was at that time. So I said, yeah, sure, okay. So I, I borrowed her mountain bike, which was really nice for her to just lend me her mountain bike. And I went up to the local ski mountain by myself. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I thought, hey, I might as well give this a try because what I would do is I was in the gym lifting weights and I would just sit myself on the stationary trainer for hours, press random cycle, and I would just cycle my way. And she looked at me every day in the gym. She's like, why don't you get outside and do this? So I, that's how I took this opportunity. So that led to um, another open door and I took some opportunities to um, attend some local races up in Silver Star. <clears throat> a, few le a, few, a few years later, that first opportunity that I took led me to my very first big competition. And I did dig out this medal that I won for my very first competition, and that was from the BC Summer Games in Penticton. <clears throat> that was a silver medal that I, that I received at the BC Summer Games in Penticton, and the funny thing about, the interesting thing about this story is that it wasn't in mountain biking, the, the, the sport that I set out to do at first. It was actually in road biking. And how that, this is a long story, but how that came about was that this time you had to do both mountain biking and road biking if you were to be an athlete in BC Summer Games. And I said to my coach, I'm like, well, I don't have a road bike. All I do is mountain bike. So the local bike store got a, a, a road bike for me to use. They go, hey, Gina, why don't you use this road bike? And I looked at it and I'm like, boy, that has skinny tires. <laughs> uh, and I, had, I really had no idea how to road race I had, but I had to do it because that was part I wanted to be in the BC Summer Games for mountain bike. So uh, I took this road bike and, and sure enough, I, um, I guess I was fairly good at the event and I won myself a silver medal in that event for the first time. So taking that opportunity was another op door opener to, to my career. I was a pro professional road racer then for 12 years and uh, raced all over the world uh, riding professionally uh, road and then again another opportunity came and somebody said hey Gina we think you should try the track because you would be good at it and I said track I said that bike doesn't have any brakes and it only has one gear are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> again, I, was, I had no idea I was like you're kidding me so anyways they shoved me on this track bike and uh, or I really shoved myself on the track bike and I took the opportunity to borrow a friend's bike again and I uh, tried the track and uh, I guess it was six months later I had won uh, my first national championships in, on, on the track. So that was a combination of training on the road and also trying this out, but it came to me fairly, fairly quickly. And um, that uh, eventually led me to uh, competing for Canada at the, at, the, at the Beijing Olympics. And I came uh, ninth place at the Beijing Olympics. And uh, it was all, 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 all a matter of taking some opportunities and overcoming some obstacles uh, to help me get to that point. Now. <clears throat> I would like to talk also about uh, somebody else who received a silver medal at the uh, at the at, at the games. And this person, this person, I've known for a long time. And when I first started seeing this person training, she was up in up in West Bank, and she 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 was a walker, and she loved to walk. She would walk by herself every day on the roads and the neighborhoods of, of West Bank. And she, she, she walked alone, but she also walked with people like Bon Jovi and uh, Metallica and Guns N' Roses blaring in her earphones, right? So she would have friends along the way, but she walked every single day dedicated. 
uh, for years. And then uh, this, this, this woman uh, moved to Vancouver Island. And there was a bit of a shift. She, she would walk along, along, along the, um, the uh, um, um, ocean walk. There's a path along the ocean there. And, and she, started, she decided to, uh, there was a few local events, so she decided to go on in a few local walking events, which motivated her, and she started to, to meet some friends and, and, uh, and sparked her interest for a little bit more competition. But let me tell you, this lady, she became a changed woman. She would walk, and I never knew her to walk like this before, but she would get out there, rain or shine, snow or sleet, and even if it was snowing, she would not only walk outside, but she would walk up and down her condo hallways for seven kilometers. <laughs> seven kilometers, up and down the hallway, up and down the stairs, you name it. She, would, she wouldn't give up her training for the, for the weather. <clears throat> Along her walks, a few things I noticed that she would talk, talk to me about. She met different friends. She met other walkers. She lost 30 pounds. She was a woman who didn't know what a lentil was <laughs> or a bean. She was a woman who was a very traditional eater. She started to learn about different eating habits, vegetarian eating, different meat eating, she started to, to, to take the right supplements. Her body started changing. I could see that she started feeling better. And she was starting to get a little bit older too. She started, you know, started starting seeing some, some difficulties walking upstairs. You know, I had known her for a long, long time. And, and over these years, all of a sudden, she'd be whipping up these stairs like no other. And I thought to her, wow, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big change. So I went out walking with her, and that was a wrong mistake, and because she would walk so fast, I had a hard time keeping up with her. I was like, you have just, she's, she went from having a hard time getting upstairs to walking faster than I could even imagine. This woman is my mother, June Green. And she's sitting just over here. My mother won a silver medal at the BC Senior Games last year. Yeah. Yeah. The nurse her on the podium. <laughs> that was her first BC Senior Games, and through all the training, all the all the weather, all the things that she endured. There's my mom who's lost uh, 30 pounds and she was a medalist like myself. We were both uh, silver medalists together at our first games. So I'm very proud of her, but I'm also proud of Burnaby. I'm very proud of Burnaby for taking on this huge, huge feat and this huge event that I think in my, in, 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 in my, in my career and seeing BC Summer Games, Commonwealth Games, Pan American Games, Olympic Games, and the BC Senior Games almost can bring tears to my eyes because I think it is such an integral part of development at this age and through our entire life that is going to provide the opportunity and will continue to provide the opportunity for people like my mom and for everybody, all the other athletes to adapt a healthy lifestyle, to feel good about themselves, to meet friends. And these are the three main things that I focused on and that helped me in throughout, throughout my career. It wasn't the medals. It wasn't the Olympic Games. It was the friends that I made, how I felt good about myself, adapting a healthy lifestyle, and being the best that I could be. So in celebrating the 25th anniversary of the BC Summer Games, Senior Games. I'd like to congratulate Burnaby for taking this on, and I wish you all the best in the upcoming months leading up to the event. Thank you very much. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that a great message? Super. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we draw your attention to our...